Alrighty, and welcome to the particle systems in 3ds Max. Uh, we are doing it this way, just in case the school computers cannot handle it. Alright, first off, uh, we go to the Create tab, and go to the drop-down list under Geometry, and go to Particle Systems. Uh, today we're going to choose Super Spray. And just like creating almost anything else in 3ds Max, it's just a simple click and drag, and then you've got your Super Spray. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually go down here where it says Load Save Presets. I click on that to expand that rollout. And then uh, click on Hose. And then hit Load. And then if you want, you can move your time slider and watch what kind of effect it does there. Alrighty. And then after we have loaded up hose here, we're going to change some of the settings. So expand particle generation. And for our use rate, actually let's turn this to uh, frame 75 here. For our use rate, we're going to actually go um, with 40. We're going to use 40 particles per frame. Uh, keep the, free, the uh, speed the same. And let's see, instead of ticks, which are these little plus signs. We want it to display mesh, which we'll choose here in just a moment. It uh, automatically has one cho uh, chosen for us. And it already went through and changed our size, but that's okay. We can change the size back again. Actually, I want it bigger than one. I'm actually going to go with a, a size of seven. And I want it to start emitting the particle, the particles um, actually before the beginning of my timeline. So I'm going to go with about a second, which is 30 frames. 30 frames per second, so about 30 frames before zero, and go about 30 frames after the end of my timeline, which is 100, so 130. Alright, and we're going to change the particle type. Right now it's got triangles, which that's fine. Here, let me show you what that looks like here real quick. That's what it looks like right now uh, as triangles, but we're actually going to choose facing, which turns the volume up quite a bit, as you can see. Alrighty, and pretty much we are done with our particles. Um, next thing we're going to do is put some material to it, so we've got something other than this blue color. Alright, so hit M on the keyboard for material. I'm going to go through this kind of quickly here. Um, if it this works out in class, I'll actually go slower with it during class. Um, first things first, uh, we're going to go to the maps rollout. Hit the check mark, checkbox for diffuse color. Click none, and then we're actually going with the particle age and I'm gonna go ahead and set these colors we're gonna have white um, a very light gray and then we're gonna have a dark gray actually you can change your colors up here numerically just like that a um, little bit lighter than that. There we go. Okay. Alright, and then click on Go to Parent. 
um, let's see, let's scroll up here, I do not want glossiness, so change that to zero. Okay, and scroll back down here to the opacity map, hit that checkbox, go to none, and we're actually going to do a gradient. Or, I'm sorry, we're going to do a mask. Um, and then we've got two choices here. First one is our gradient. That looks good. Actually, we need to switch those around. So very easy. Just drag and drop and hit swap. Okay. All right, map, noise. All right, go to parent, go to parent. All right, and then assign material to selection. All right, and we're going to close the material editor. Let's take a look. And instead of that gray thing, we now have something that slightly resembles smoke and takes a while on my computer to render. So for the school computers, it will take even longer. Alright, but we're not quite there yet. I'm actually going to add some lighting to this. So we're going to go over here to the lights for almost all of your purposes here at school we are going to go with the standard lighting um, for our purposes today we're doing free spot and omni light so let's start off with free spot create our light there and obviously it's not pointing in the right direction so we're gonna have to rotate it and then, as always, when doing any kind of rotation, make sure that your angle snap toggle is turned on. And anytime you want to switch views while you have rotate, move, or scale, make sure to right click the viewport and then you can rotate or move. I'm going to align this up here so it's just under the starting of the particles. Try to make sure it's lined up in the top viewport as well. All right. Looks nice and lined up. Here's what it looks like right now. And you're like, wait, but it's all black. Well, hold on. We're getting there. Alright, go to your Modify tab. We are going to modify the light. Now, your screen might not look like this. Uh, that's okay. What you can do is, um, usually these rollouts are all bunched up. Just click on them to expand them. No big deal there. Uh, first thing I'm going to change actually is right here. We've got hotspot beam and we've got fall off field. So I'm going to turn down the hotspot a bit. And if you want, you can watch in the front view as that turns down. And then we're going to change the fall off as that turns down. Alrighty, we're going to keep the white color and just turn down the multiplier. Alright, and we're not quite done yet. We need to grab the Omni Light and place it in our scene here. Move it around in some of the other viewports here get it to do what we want. Just test it in perspective. Alright, 
we've got a little bit of it showing up there. All right, let's zoom out a bit here. Try again. Okay. All right, I'm actually going to make it so we can see it just a bit easier, and this will go along with what we're uh, putting our smoke effect to. Then actually change, go to uh, rendering, environment, and then we're going to change the background color to like a grayish blue kind of thing here. Okay. Right, go ahead and close that out. Our smoke looks black. Alright, let's move our light around. Make sure we've got the light selected, our Omni light. Okay, so the issue was that the particle size was actually too big. Uh, see what happens when we render now. It doesn't look quite so black. Um, obviously, I've moved the view around, so let's go back to the view we were in, and voila, looks all nice and pretty and like smoke. Alrighty. And uh, this is where I'm going to stop this little uh, tutorial here for the day, or this little 3DS Max thing that may or may not work in class. Alright, thanks guys!